artsy town, I guess. Um, we spoke to someone in Big Bend that said it was really cool and you should check it out and we haven't heard of it before. So it sounded like something different and we wanted to try it. So we just left Big Bend National Park. We'll put a link of that video over here if you want to check it out. Check it, check it out. And the reason we're going to Marfa is because there is supposedly these mystery lights that we really don't know what they are, but I heard they're really cool. And where we're gonna be camping tonight, you can see them right from where we'll be camping. So we're pretty excited and we're on our way there. Well, we've made it to the Marfa Mystery Lights viewing area. It's a little rest area on the side of the road. It's got bathrooms and a little seating area. A bunch of people here, RVs lined up and down this whole parking area along with cars who came out to see it. And uh, Ashley's already out there. Let's go see what we can see. And the Marfa Mystery Lights, we should be able to see them from here. We don't know when it's gonna happen. So I think we're kind of just gonna stay here and watch until probably really late. <laughs> so yeah. But when we get, when we see them, you'll be seeing them too. <laughs> Thank you, light man. So, we think we discover where the lights are. I think me and Chow were both thinking like something like the northern lights. We thought it was going to, I thought it was going to light up the sky. So, and we didn't bother to look it up to see what it really looked like. And now we see like little flickering lights off in the distance and we weren't sure if that was it so we said okay let's look it up. So we looked it up and I guess that is it. So it's not what we thought it was but still pretty cool. While we were looking up what what they look like we read that scientists think it's a reflection, a reflection of car headlights and campfires. The word they use was atmospheric reflection. I'm not really sure what that is but when you look at them, it does look like headlights just like in the distance. So yeah, let's go look. Well, the mystery lights were just about impossible to capture on video. You could see just a little spot off in the distance, but took a few pictures that kind of show them. It's the mystery lights you're looking for are just all the little lights that are down on the horizon. There's like white ones and orange ones, and there was the occasional red blinking light that would be out in the desert. Not sure if we captured any red ones on camera. There was a big glow off in the distance. And the idea is that the whole area out there, there's nothing. There's no roads, there's no towns for those lights to be coming from. It's just there are these strange lights. And I guess the idea is that it's cars, headlights, and just lights that are way off in the distance being reflected onto the horizon so they look closer, I think. <clears throat> and that's what you're going to see in these pictures. It's just the little lights along the horizon that are technically out. They look like they're coming from out in the middle of nowhere. So we made it to the town of Marfa. Um, it's supposed to be really artsy around here, so we've already stopped by a couple things like old trucks and paintings on the walls, which we'll show you guys. And we're pretty much just walking around until we find some more artsy stuff. Here's, here's the tacos. Oh, and now we're at this place where it has breakfast tacos, and Chad really wants to eat here. Supposedly, Anthony Bourdain ate tacos here. They say it's something special, but it's now popular just because he ate here. So we gotta go eat. Always catching me eating food. <laughs> and we got breakfast, breakfast tacos. It was two for two dollars. <laughs> this phone here is singing music to me. <laughs> Stop, this is so cool. Yep. of different little art 
art stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely a cool stop, especially when you're passing through. It's nice to just be able to stop and pull over and enjoy a small little town that you usually wouldn't go to. So we really enjoyed our time there. And now we're off to another art exhibit. Um, it's like on the side of the road. I think it's like so it's very random, um, but I saw it online and I really want to go there. So we're going to check that out next. And we're on our way there now. So driving through the desert, out in the middle of nowhere here. Oh, look at them. They're right in front of oh, us. Oh, you can't see it right now. <laughs> We've never actually seen tumbleweeds in person. I kind of always thought it was just a thing of Western movies, but they're everywhere out here. They're just blowing across the road. Look, oh, it's going to hit us. Let's see if we can see it. Oh, right here. Wait, wait. Oh, oh, they're everywhere. Oh, there it goes. They're right. everywhere. <laughs> We're going to hit them. Oh, oh, look at them. Look at them. Look at them. We made it to our destination and there seems to be a, I don't know what it's called, like a mini tornado. Sand? I don't know what to call it. I don't know, but it's going on out there. It would be a water spout on the ocean. Yeah, it's just swirling and picking up dirt. How cool is that? That's even cooler than your store. That's rude. <laughs> it's getting closer. It might hit us. Oh my God. Oh. Tumbleweed. Oh my god, look at it! It's gonna hit us! Oh, oh! Oh! Sit down! Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, personally, I think the tumbleweeds and the little sand tornadoes are even cooler than this art exhibit. But Ashley's excited for it. it it's kind of strange. It's just like a, a Prada store that actually has some a little bit of product in it that's in the middle of nowhere in the desert. We'll show you some photos that we take here. Well, we're finished with our traveling today, wrapped up our Marfa experience, and we've got some peppers, onions, and ground turkey cooking on the stove. Yum. We're having some taco slash fajitas for dinner tonight. And tomorrow, we're gonna be in Guadalupe Mountains National Park in West Texas, Northwest Texas, I guess. And we're just three miles outside the park right now, that we're actually on a spot that we couldn't find anywhere else. It's a little rest area where you're allowed to overnight. On Google Maps, it calls it El Capitan Lookout. It's just outside Guadalupe National Park, though. It's just to the south on whatever road this is. What road is this? Highway 62. <laughs> and yeah, so this wasn't on iOverlander or RV Park or any of the apps we use. We kind of just saw it on the satellite map and went for it, not knowing if we could, ac if we could actually stay here. But there's no sign saying you couldn't, so. Yeah, and the other closest campsite coming from the south was 70 miles back in another town. Yeah. So this is by far the best option for staying here. There was another option that's a rest area that's 10 miles past the park, but I didn't want to pass it and come back because since we're coming from the south. So yeah. cool spot if you're coming from the south to Guadalupe to overnight. It's a little un uh, unlevel <clears throat> front to back, but not bad. Nothing we can't handle for one night. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna spend the night here. The views are awesome. I can't wait to wake up here and see. Yeah. We're at a mountain overlook here. Couldn't see anything right now. But. Yeah, we got here just after dark, but we'll catch up with you tomorrow in the National Park. We made it to Guadalupe. So we are here and we are actually on a trail already, but we were only three miles away from where we stayed last night. So we pretty much just packed up and hit the road and here we are. And we're on a trail called the Devil's Hall. This is one of the shorter trails on in Guadalupe. It's about 4.2 miles, I believe. And yeah, let's get to it.
So we made it to the end of Devil's Hall. Pretty cool, I see the hall. <laughs> it was it was really nice. And now we're on our way back. We're gonna think we're gonna do another hike, which is shorter. And it's supposed to be like a small spring at the end of it. So that's pretty exciting. So yeah, we're making our way back to the RV and we'll head over there next. Well, we made it to our second stop in this park. It is the hike is called Smith Spring and the part of the park is called Frijoli Ranch or something like that. And I think it's out to one, maybe two springs. And there might be some wildlife since there's a water source coming out of the ground here. We'll see what we can see. I saw something that said that you can even see elk here sometimes. You're not going to see an elk. <laughs> well, I didn't even think there'd be elk over here. So, hopefully... I don't even know what an elk is. <laughs> but that's an elk. I hope we get to see an elk. yesterday at Smith Springs we pretty much came to this um, BML, BML it's actually a BLM campground B what is it BLM B what did I say Bureau of Land Management oh, BLM okay BLM. go what you oh yeah so the spot we stayed out <laughs> last night is actually a BLM campground which I didn't know existed there's a sign at the entrance it's called uh, I'll tell you in a second when we drive by yes, the sign we'll take a little shot and Looks like a bunch of companies partnered together and funded this gravel lot with the trash service, which is very nice. It's a nice little spot. There were a bunch of people here last night. Yeah, we had a fire. Yeah. Got to people. see some schoolies. It's cool. Yeah. Fun time. Met Buddy got to friend. Got to meet some friends. Yeah, met two couples out of school buses, toured their buses. They toured our, our RV. Yeah, we had and, a good uh, time. Yeah, a lot of fun. Had a campground, hung out for a while at night. And we found this on iOverlander. And how far was it from Guadalupe? Uh, like, it's not about far. 30 minutes to the north of yes. Guadalupe. Here. So here we show you real quick. It's called the Chosa Campground. Let's see, that's where we stay. So pretty cool place. But what's really exciting is where we're going next. I'm gonna let Chad take this one because he's, I think, a little more excited than I am. Tell him where we're going. Yeah. So the spot we found, we're right near Carlsbad Cavern, so I guess we know it's a cavey area. And just about two miles to the north of this, there's some BLM land with wild caves on it. You know, just, I guess, und undeveloped caves that don't have man-made lighting inside illuminating everything. And exploring wild cave is something I've kind of always wanted to do. But on the list for this trip, and I just didn't think we were going to find one. But there's two of them. I'm going to say two because there's two main entrance areas, but it looks like there's five or six cave that, caves that branch off of each entrance. So probably just go check out the safest looking one we'll see but uh the spot looks really cool that we're going to so we're going to drive over there now it's just it's down dirt roads but it'll probably be like 10 to 15 minutes of driving but it's only two or three miles and that's where we're going to wrap up this video so you can catch us next time in these caves we'll see you then